kind of like from B Electronics, and this is the XYZ printing Da Vinci Junior 1.0. Now, I've had this printer for a little over two years. Now, in that two-year period, I've learned a lot of its kind of weird quirks and things that it does. So, in this two-year review of this printer, I thought I'd mention those things so that anyone looking for a 3D printer, or even somebody who's looking to buy this specific printer, will know what to and what not to do when using it. Okay, so the first major thing for this is to... This may sound very simple, but it's very essential is to update its firmware. Now the printer comes shipped with firmware 1.0.4 and the newest version, I believe at the time of this recording, is 2.2.7. Now there are a ton of improvements such as the loading and unloading of the filament, the speed of the z-axis, and even stuff down to the specific nozzle diameter of the extruder. Now all of this had to be configured manually in version 1.0.4 but 2.2.7 seems to fix pretty much a lot of the problems that I've had with this over the past two years. I don't even know when it came out. I just plugged in the USB cable and it said firmware update. Seems to work great now. Now one thing I would recommend if you're using it is to literally take all the panels off of it. Now the reason is because you're going to be doing maintenance on this quite a bit and it uses this weird screwdriver tip that's not really that standard. So I'd recommend literally taking out all the screws and a lot of the outside panels just so that you can quickly pop stuff off when you need to maintenance it. Now one of the things you'll definitely have to maintenance is the filament feeder. Now the filament feeder is held in by four screws and in my experience this feeder will chew up the filament quite often. Now a quick solution that I've found to this problem is you may have noticed it already is a small desk fan placed directly behind the stepper motor of the feeder. Now this is because the stepper motor of the feeder gets extremely hot while in use, especially for long prints. And so putting a fan on it may help it cool down a bit to not melt the filament to the feeder gears. And in my experience, this worked very well. Now I've only been using the fan for about 20 hours of printing, but in that 20 hours, it hasn't failed once. This filament is two years old, by the way. I didn't replace the filament. Over time, it gets a little brittle. And so what you may notice is that when loading and unloading older filament, the gears make a very obnoxious squeaking slash grinding sound. Now this can usually be fixed by just getting new filament. If you don't want to buy new filament, just deal with the squeaking and just leave the room when you're not using it. That's what I've been doing, seems to work fine. And another thing that I'd recommend is to check the things that you're printing, make sure there aren't some weird overhangs or anything too complicated for the printer to handle. Now I've printed out a pair of clay packy sharpies at, I don't know how small this is, they're really small. But the great thing about these is that these are printed using three separate parts. Now the good thing about printing separate parts is that it won't be too complicated for the printer. Too complicated things may cause the extruder to run over things that it's already done and clog it up. And if that happens, you'll be taking out quite a bit of screws from the extruder in order to fix it, which are those same weird star bit screws. So when you're printing your models, make sure to keep it simple, try and minimize overhangs, and just in general try and keep them to where they're not just too complex for the printer to handle. Now one thing that would help if your filament is continually getting clogged is to check your Z-offset. Now firmware 227 makes this very easy with the new Z-offset tool. So if you're Z-offsetting, that means you're moving the extruder head plus or minus a few millimeters or a few fractions of a millimeter in order to make the extruder not too close to the print bed. So one thing that I've learned is when you're Z-offsetting, pull the bed out first, move the extruder over, take a standard US letter size sheet of paper, or really any sheet of paper for that matter, and fold it in half. Then you just take the two sheets of paper, put them underneath the extruder, and make sure they can slide in and out with ease. If they can't, that means your extruder is too close to your print bed and you should move it up. Now with the newer firmware, as you adjust the offset, hear that? As you adjust the offset, it will move the extruder up and down so that you can continue seeing which position works best for you. And one other thing I've noticed is that your filament type really does matter for print quality. So this is the nature colored filament, which Actually, nature just means translucent. So it's got no dyes, it's got no color or anything. 
And this is the filament that I've found to be the most reliable when printing, mainly because it doesn't have any dyes or thick additives to clog up the print head. I've used the black filament and the white filament, and they both yielded terrible results most of the time. Now the clear green filament I've also used, and I've gotten pretty good results with this, mainly because the dyes are not that thick kind of dye and make it opaque. This is still translucent filament, so it works quite well. So when you're printing, I definitely recommend the nature colored filament or even the clear green filament. Just any of the translucent ones and you'll be good. Now if you are using old filament and it breaks off, just remember to load the filament every time you create a new print. Now as you can see, it's kind of broken off from the feeder so it's not going to work for more than a few seconds at a time. So I definitely recommend before every print, just go through the menu and manually load the filament through to get a little bit of the filament flowing through the extruder before your print. And also the last thing to keep in mind is that print orientation does matter quite a bit. So this is a part that I printed for my engineering class and it will, and it's, and its final use will be like this, the horizontal orientation upside down. Now if I were to print this like this, the strength would be side to side. Now this is because the extruder extrudes in layers. It does not extrude up and down, it extrudes horizontally. So that means if it was printed like this, this part could break off quite easily because the only thing holding it together is one layer's adhesion to the other layer. That's not necessarily a good thing. So for parts like this, you definitely want to think where you want the strength of it to be. If you want it to be between things, print it sideways. That way everything will be on the same layer. You won't have to deal with the adhesion issues between layers. Oh, and one more thing. You might have noticed that I have blue tape on the bed. Now this is because I'm too cheap and I don't really want to buy the expensive bed tape. Well, guess what? Painter's tape works just fine for bed tape. Just make sure to lay it out diagonally on the bed, or else when you're peeling up your prints, you might end up peeling up some of the tape. So I think that's everything to be said about the DaVinci Junior 1.0 3D printer. Now if you're a 3D printing beginner, I'd definitely recommend this. It's quite cheap for a 3D printer, and it doesn't really have that steep of a learning curve. Just make sure to try and take some of the advice I stated in this video. It'll be good. See you next time.